I'm about to reveal exactly how much cash I earned mining Bitcoin for 24 hours on Google Cloud Platform. Now, this may seem like your run-of-the-mill tech tutorial, but I assure you I am taking on substantial risk by bringing you this information. Why? Because if you go to cloud.google.com forward slash terms, tucked away deep in the recesses of that document is this excerpt. Customers will not engage in cryptocurrency mining without Google's prior written approval. So I reached out to their support team to see if I could get said written approval, but they never followed up with me. It was beginning to look like I was going to have to do this black hat style. Warning, I'm a professional, do not try this at home. But before we start mining, I've gotta make some things clear. See, this isn't my first rodeo and I get all kinds of comments asking about the viability of projects like this. Comments like, Tim, how do I get more hash power from my grandma's old Toshiba? Or Tim, what if I use solar power as my energy source? Or Tim, what's this rash under my leg? And I wanna put all these queries to bed once and for all. Here's the truth. Mining Bitcoin in 2022 is largely monopolized by industrial grade data centers using ASIC chips. And ASIC stands for Application Specific Integrated Circuit. Unfortunately, there's really no way to squeeze out any profit if your hardware isn't highly optimized for the algorithm being run. In fact, the margins are so low that oftentimes the only way for crypto mining operations to realize profits is for them to source energy from natural or otherwise discounted sources. And to explain why the crypto computing space is currently this way, I wanna give you a brief history of computer processors. See, in the beginning, there were CPUs which specialized in complex operations that we can think of as being deep in nature. These complex and more sporadic workloads have historically been suited to multi-core CPUs. But as computers began to feature ever-increasing sophistication around display monitors, the need for a chip that could run more shallow operations in parallel began to to arise, and that's when the GPU or graphics processor unit was born. Innovation largely languished here for a few decades, but then underwent a renaissance when crypto mining and deep learning began to become even more ubiquitous. What people found was that the GPUs were orders of magnitude more efficient at running the hashing algorithms that powered the proof of work crypto blockchains, and similarly, they were more effective at processing tensor operations, which underpin machine learning model training. Back in 2017, it progressed to the point where people were buying commercial grade GPUs from the likes of NVIDIA in order to mine cryptocurrency and train deep learning algorithms, despite the fact that they weren't initially built for that purpose. And just as a funny aside, when the crypto market hit one of its peaks back in 2017, I asked myself, you know, why are people buying the individual crypto tokens when they can buy the underlying supply chain of the entire crypto space? which in my mind was these GPU chips. Not to mention the tailwinds of these chips being used for the budding deep learning revolution that was about to explode. And I acted on this thesis by buying AMD and Nvidia. I bought AMD in 2018 at about $16 a share and Nvidia at $248 a share. And you can see AMD hit about $160 at its peak in 2021, but still is much higher than what I purchased it for. And NVIDIA is the same deal. You can see that I've done quite well. Even now that the market's in a bit of a decline, it's still much higher than what I bought it for back in 2018. And this isn't to brag, this is just to demonstrate that market knowledge and acting on trends and having a thesis around where the market's going can earn you money. Anyways, back to our timeline. So fast forward to 2022 and chips have evolved once more. For crypto mining, we now have companies that create ASIC chips, which are specifically designed for running the particular hashing algorithm used by a crypto blockchain. 
Similarly, deep learning now happens on TPU or tensor processing units, which are chips designed to run the tensor multiplications needed for training machine learning models. And then on the edge, we have new chips that are designed to run the ML inference to execute models quickly. Earlier this year, I bought a new Mac and I basically bought the best MacBook Pro that they offer. And you can see the makeup of the chips here. So why do I mention all this? Because I wanna make it clear how much this space has matured and that mining crypto on spare computer parts or idle compute is not economical. But what is valuable about tutorials like this is the knowledge asset gained by going through the process. Installing the crypto mining solution and creating the requisite accounts will force us to learn how to leverage this new technology, in turn providing us with a better understanding of how these technologies work, which will prove valuable moving forward into the ever-increasing Web3 landscape. The final piece of context one must understand is what exactly crypto mining is to begin with. There are two main ways that decentralized blockchains validate their networks. The first and oldest way is called proof of work, which was coined with the creation of Bitcoin. Proof of work is a dynamic approach to validating the network that considers all of the compute currently mining the next block and essentially dulls out that block at random based on the amount of hash power put forth by the network validators. The criticism of proof of work is that as more compute comes online, the function adjusts and gets harder and harder. And that results in the computers using more and more energy. So the difficulty level for these hash functions is determined by the network itself and is dictated by how many leading zeros must be in front of the hash. And so all these miners will take the last block, start generating hashes, and the first one to generate a cryptographically accurate result will be given the ability to generate the next block, and along with that comes some reward. And so as new compute comes online, the number of leading zeros will increase, and as the amount of compute power goes down, it will decrease, and so, and so that's how it's able to keep generating new blocks at around 10 minutes. But the benefits of proof of work is it is fully decentralized and has really been proven out over more than a decade now. Currently, many blockchains are migrating to proof of stake, which is a different model that is orders of magnitude less energy intensive. Proof of stake relies on validators staking material amounts of native currency such as Solana or Ethereum and strives to align incentives across network validators by getting them to invest in the process. The validators are then unlikely to disrupt the network because if they do, then their staked currency could become worthless. This model aims to be far more energy efficient, but does not carry the same technical underpinnings of proof of work. So when we say mining cryptocurrency, we're typically referring to proof of work blockchains because for proof of stake, there is no mining. So without any further ado, let's hop right into it. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is create an account on Slush Pool. Slush Pool is going to allow us to join a pool to mine Bitcoin. So I've gone ahead and I've created my account here and we can come back to this in a little bit. The second thing we're gonna to wanna to do is to create a virtual machine on Google Cloud Platform. So I'm gonna go over to create instance. We're gonna call this BTC Data Slayer. And we're gonna pick a CPU configuration that is moderately powerful. I'm thinking eight, eight CPUs, 32 gigs of RAM should be decent without breaking the bank. Let's see here, 196 a month. So you probably don't wanna keep it running too long. 27, seven, 27 cents an hour. So what's that, like $8 a day? So just be mindful of that. Um, but that's going to be adequate for what I want here. And we're going to use a Debian operating system. 10 gigs for persistent storage is a little light. So let's pop that up. 
And let's see here. Allow HTTP, allow HTTPS. That looks good. Oops, let's make this compliant BTC. Okay. So we'll go ahead and create this virtual machine. And this is where we're gonna actually run the mining script. And so those eight cores are going to be what we use to um, run the, sh the SHA-256 hashing algorithm. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and pop into it here. Real quick, there is no gas limit on expressing your gratitude. So if you like this video, then go ahead and hit that like button. Okay, so I always elevate myself to root first. So I'm gonna do sudo su dash. And now every subsequent command will be um, essentially be prefaced with sudo. So we don't have to worry about that anymore. All right, let's go ahead and update the operating system. So we're gonna do apt get update. And then we're gonna do apt get upgrade. Okay, so the operating system just finished upgrading. Okay, so now we're gonna install some dependencies. And you can find these in the description. Basically, these are underlying packages that are required to run the uh, multi-core miner. Okay, so we have all the dependencies. Now we're gonna actually download um, the CPU miner. So we're gonna do git clone, and we're gonna use this CPU miner multi repository. Okay, that should have created a folder, CPU miner multi, there it is. Okay, and now we just need to build it. So the first thing we're gonna run is autogen.shell, and then we're gonna run configure, and then we're gonna run build.sh. Okay, so to execute the actual mining, uh, we're gonna run this script here, uh, but we need to set up some things in slush pool. Uh, and the primary thing is we need to have a Bitcoin wallet address where our proceeds will be sent to. And there's different ways to generate or ascertain a uh, wallet address for Bitcoin, but I think probably one of the easiest ways for folks is just to just use the address that Coinbase gives them. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Okay, so to get the wallet address from Coinbase, you can download the wallet app. And if we go ahead and select that. And then if we go to receive, there's gonna be your Bitcoin wallet address. So we can just go ahead and copy that. And then we just want to bring that to our computer so that we can enter it into slush pool. So if we go over to slush pool and we select Bitcoin here and we go to settings. So if we go to funds and then Bitcoin, we can add our wallet address in here. So you could do create new wallet and you could say uh, my new address and then you can just take uh, you can type in the Bitcoin wallet address that we found on uh, the Coinbase app. And then you'll have that set up here. So that's where the rewards will be sent to once you start mining. So I already have that set up here. Okay, so we have um, slush pool set up there. So we're gonna go to uh, mining workers. And so you set up the worker on the device that's doing the mining and then the pool will pick it up. Um, so what we're gonna do is um, there's a command here and there's a certain schema to this command. So we gotta make sure that we're in the right folder. We are here, there should be a 
file called CPU miner. That's what we're going to execute. So let's see if I can't paste this in. Okay. Um, so you add a password. I just did testing one, two, three, four, and you use this for the username, your user slash pool username dot, and then you just create a worker name. It really doesn't even need to be anything specific. Um, but I'm just following this here. And then because I'm out of the US, I'm doing, I'm using the US East um, domain right here. And then the port is 3333. And quick shout out to Tangway Pruvat. We are using their open source crypto mining scripts. Okay, so let's go ahead and run the mining script here. So I'm gonna run this. And now we get some uh, uh, log data here. So the difficulty level, um, the block, uh, the hash rate, and we can see the um, activity on each core. In fact, a good way to monitor this is, um, I'm gonna open up another shell. Um, there's a program called HTOP, which shows uh, resource allocation. So if we run that, it should help us visualize how the cores are being utilized, if they're being utilized. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna do sudo sudo dash. I'm gonna run htopped. I'm gonna have to install it first. But we can now run htop. And what you can see is all eight cores are pinned at 100%, which is kind of what we want because they're being utilized fully. And you can see the running operations are largely the command I just I just ran, and uh, so so you can see that activity. And likewise, if I go ahead and kill the mining, see it just released all the cores, and I can start it back up, and they ramp right back up to a hundred. So that all looks good. Um, the key here is the worker is not going to register on the pool until we submit accepted shares. And I was not able to get any shares to be accepted. Um, and it's probably because Bitcoin is not really designed for CPU mining. It's more for the ASIC chips now. And uh, as a result, it's so inefficient that I'm actually not able to even get shares through. So, you know, I kind of arbitrarily picked the eight cores and the 32 gigabytes of RAM. If you had an ASIC chip or if you had a GPU, which is a little bit more involved, but um, probably would uh, get you some more hash power and actually help you submit those shares, then what would happen is the pool here would um, show your worker and it would also start tracking um, your contributions and it would pay you out accordingly based on those contributions. Um, but the reality is it's just not, this is not how you should be mining Bitcoin. Um, it would be a similar process if you had the right hardware but this is not going to be lucrative, economical, um, but it does give you a, a kind of insight into what's going on and um, proves that you can mine on kind of a customized um, computer hardware. And you might be able to even modify like the stratum difficulty and things like that in order to get some shares through, but I doubt that you're able. You're, I doubt that you're going to be able to uh, to um, get enough shares through for anything to anything material to be paid out to you. So Bitcoin on CPUs on GCP is possible, but it is a bit of a bust in terms of uh, payoff. So, anyways, I just wanted to show you guys that for this tutorial, so you get a feel for how easy this is to set up. And that's all I have. As always, if you want to stay apprised of the latest around emerging tech, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thank you.